Hello everyone. So it's been quite a while since I posted a video. I just wanted to give an update on my one mile a day walking journey. I'm seeing a great difference in my appearance. The most noticeable difference that I'm seeing right now is that my midsection has flattened out a whole lot um, over the course of this walking journey. This has gone down so much. This is awesome. So I'm swimming down. I'm sticking to my one mile a day. When I first started walking the one mile a day, it was so hard to do every single day. I got to a point where I'm like, I don't know if I can stick to this plan because walking this one mile every single day is, is taking a toll on me. I was tired during the one mile walk every day. I was like, I don't know if I can get through this every day. But now that I am six months in because I started January 21st, 2024, and today is currently July 27th, 2024. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, that's six months of walking, one mile a day, every single day. I have not skipped a day at all. No reason to get your exercise in every single day. And everything is coming together nicely. I'm finally slimming down after baby number seven. And I'm so proud of myself because I've been so consistent. I've lost exactly 10 pounds since May. At the start of my walking journey, I wasn't focused on weight loss. I was just focused on getting myself going, getting the exercise in. So I was focused on that. I wasn't focused on my eating habits, pretty much ate what I wanted. But for the first four months, I will say I was, I was eating out and everything. But since May, I haven't been eating out. I've been making home cooked meals, you know, and that's pretty much it. But still eating whatever I want to eat. If you want burgers and fries, make them yourself. If you want nachos and tacos, make them yourself. You want that nice juicy steak, make it yourself. And that has had a big impact on my ability to lose a lot of the water weight that I've had on myself. Between May and July now, I have lost 10 pounds. I didn't even realize it until I went in my health journal because every single day I write down when I walk, you know, things I might eat, how I'm feeling, you know, the changes I'm seeing in myself. And I went back yesterday and looked at it. I'm like, I've lost 10 pounds since May. I didn't even realize it, but every morning I was coming in here, getting dressed, I look at myself in the mirror and I realize, you know, my waist is shrinking. My bloatedness is, you know, going away. I'm slimming down. I'm looking different, okay? Um, I feel like my face is slimmed down a lot. So walk that mile and also cook your own meals. That is my advice to you all. So another thing that I've realized after six months of walking is I have blood sugar issues and blood pressure issues. Now, I know that because I ended up in the emergency room a week ago with a blood pressure of 214 over 128, I believe. Why did I end up in the emergency room? Because at home, I started feeling funny after I made myself a fruit vegetable smoothie and I ate a bowl of cherries. I started feeling so weird, y'all. I started tingling everywhere. My face was tingling. My hands were tingling. My whole body was tingling. So I took my blood pressure and it was sky high. And I I felt so funny and I said, I need to go to the emergency room right now. I said, I don't feel good. My blood pressure is super high. I don't know why it is, but it is. Got to the emergency room. They're like, oh yeah, your blood pressure is super high. You know, what's been going on? I said, well, I just had a fruit smoothie and had cherries earlier, but when I checked my blood pressure this morning, it was pretty normal, you know? So, you know, the doctors told me, make lifestyle changes. I'm like, I walk a mile a day. I don't eat that horribly, you know? So what could it be? So they did my lab work, everything came back normal. No issues with anything. My blood sugar was fine. My sodium levels, get this, my sodium was super low, like, under the, the range it should be at. And I had to check this on myself. The doctor didn't call and say, oh, your sodium's super low. 
I had to put two and two together and be like, okay, I, I walk every single day. I sweat a lot. So that means I'm losing electrolytes. I'm not replenishing them. I'm not putting the sodium back into my diet. Having low blood sodium can affect you. What I've been doing is I added some Celtic salt to my diet. So I use Celtic salt. And my husband bought the Celtic salt months ago and he was trying to get me to take some because he said, oh, this is good for your body. Is it? You're replenishing your minerals. I didn't want to take it because in my mind, using the Celtic salt, it's going to shoot my blood pressure up, right? So I, I went and take it. And lo and behold, eating too much fruit and carbohydrates shot my blood pressure up because my blood sugar was spiking and I did not realize it. So if your blood sugar spikes, your insulin spikes, it causes a rise in your blood pressure as well. So that's what happened from me drinking the fruit smoothie and eating the cherries and uh, whatever I ate earlier in the day. I've been feeling a lot better. I cut out currently for the past week, I've cut out everything. So for breakfast, I'll have an omelet with lots of veggies with garlic, mushrooms, bell peppers, onions, um, spinach, some shredded cheese in there. That's my breakfast. And later on, I'll have a snack with some Greek yogurt with some stevia sugar in it and some walnuts, crushed walnuts in it. Very delicious. And then for dinner, I might have myself some rotisserie chicken or some chicken of some sort um, with one slice of whole wheat bread. I don't know what it is. I have to have a piece of bread with my chicken. I don't know. Growing up, going to family reunions and barbecues and stuff like that. I like to have my protein with a piece of whole wheat bread. And my blood sugar has been like 84. My blood pressure has been like 120 over 80. So cutting all that, you know, the donuts out, the chips out, the breads out, the the pastas out, the rice out, the beans out. I cut all that out because I have to get my blood sugar um, the way it needs to be because I can't eat certain things and I've realized that um, now. And so on a daily basis, if I think I can have it, I'll eat it and then I'll see what my numbers are saying the next day. So right now I'm sticking to protein, vegetables, eggs, yogurt, that's where it's at for me. And it's keeping my blood pressure intact, it's keeping my blood sugar intact. I have, um, I looked up blood type diets and it says that my body reacts horribly to carbohydrates and sugars and um, things like that. So I have to, eliminate those and keep that keep it at a very minute level so that my body can function right i remember growing up i wasn't a fruit eater i wasn't a bread eater i wasn't a pasta eater my mom cooked you know protein rich meals and as i become an adult and you know i'm having to feed my family i began to eat more fruits and you know breads and stuff like that and rice and stuff like that and it doesn't work for me so look up your blood type and look up the blood type diet and try to eat in that manner because it's really helpful. My body does better with proteins, with, um, you know, animal products, meats, um, eggs, yogurt, cheese, butter. My body does better with those types of foods. Uh, now I've tried the, you know, the vegan thing with the, you know, no meat, no cheese, no dairy, all that kind of stuff. And I was affected by that. Um, I started feeling weird. So um, since I have just stuck to, now I'm not eating a whole lot of, you know, meat and a whole lot, whole lot. I'm eating, you know, what I need. That's all that I'm eating. So you wanna not overdo it and stick to what works for your body. But this is been, what's been working for me. So, um, yeah, that's what's been up with me. Had a health scare. I'm completely fine now. My blood pressure is 120 over 80. Um, that night they did give me blood pressure medication. And you know, I took it because my blood pressure was sky high. When you're getting in the 214 over 128 area, you better take those blood pressure medications. You know, you're gonna need it that one time. But what you have to do is make up in your mind, hey, 
this is not how I'm about to live my life for the rest of my life, taking blood pressure medication. You've got to put in the effort to change what caused you to have that high blood pressure in the first place. So I figured it out for myself, and I hope you all can figure it out for yourselves. But I took the blood pressure medication at the ER they gave me, and then the next day, um, I didn't take any. I've taken three blood pressure pills, basically, um, on the days where I ate something that I shouldn't have been eating. All this has come together to help me lose weight, to help me feel better, to get my blood pressure right, to get my blood sugar right. And I'm thankful that I have the opportunity and the mindset to make those changes on my own because there's no way I want to be taking you know, blood pressure medication at 40 years old. I don't want to do it. Um, so I'm gonna, I've made the necessary changes and that's just how I'm gonna have to stick to, you know, eating what my body needs. So make sure that you're doing that for yourself. So this is my update. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. I want us all to have better health. I knew I had to do something about that. So if you're at that point in your life, I encourage you, stay on track. Get yourself an exercise regimen. Get yourself eating right. Get yourself into optimum health because health is all you have. I've got to be here for my children. I am working things out and everything is coming together after all this time. It is. So I hope you all can see the difference. I'm seeing the change. I'm looking a lot healthier. And I'm really appreciating my dedication to myself. Look at that. Look at that. My dedication to myself is helping. Let me, let me get a better look here. Have on some shorts. So, looking so much better. And everything is coming together. So, yeah, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of, like, this is going down so much. This is awesome. This is awesome. There's definitely a great difference. You wanna take the little steps to make the big changes. It's not gonna happen overnight. You have to just be consistent. Do something every single day. Don't give up on yourselves. And in six months, you'll be able to look back and say, hey, this is where I started, this is where I am now. I see the big change. Sorry to all of you who, who get into eating and exercising and think in a week, oh, in a week I'm gonna be, I'm gonna see a big magnificent change. No, it's gonna take a while. Just give yourself six months of doing that very thing every single day and you will see the changes. So I hope this update has been, you know, very informative to you all. Well, the proof is here. Look at my the start of my journey. The proof is here um, on my channel. You can do it, but do it for you. Do it for you, don't do it for anyone else. And you will be able to stick to whatever you're trying to accomplish, okay? So, that's my little pep talk to you all. My dear subscribers, thank you to all, you all who, you know, are supportive and you come here and leave comments you hit the like button you know to my new subscribers to my future subscribers thank you so much and i hope that we all can continue to have better health all right everyone i will see you all next time it might be a while but you know i'm a busy mom of seven um it gets kind of hard to provide these updates but i just want you all to see the change and see that it's possible if you just stick to your routine, basically. All right, I'm Kindly Kimberly. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.